Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Lately, I've seen a couple of comments of people asking me for a froglet farm. Now, the first snapshot video I already covered how to do a froglet farm. It's actually really simple, but nevertheless, I managed to spend an entire day on froglet farms. So in this video, I'm going to show you four different farms from rather simple, like this spawner-based farm here in the background, to 150,000 froglets per hour. All right, so let's check out the magma cube spawner farm first. So in some bastions, not all of them, you can find a magma cube spawner, usually in the center part of the bastion, so with the lava trench around. All right, um, so yeah, that's perfect setup to yeah, turn it into a froglet farm, because the way it works is the frogs would eat the tiny magma cubes and turn them into a froglet block. So for each tiny cube eaten, you get one froglet block. Also, the color of the frogs is important. So there's three different types of frog lights. And yeah, you want to get basically one of each frog in there. We got three frogs patrolling around, eating all the tiny cubes. Two is also enough, um, but I felt like one couldn't really keep up. But yeah, three is perfect. So you can just get one of each color and yeah, deal with all of those magma cubes. All right, um, so all the frog platforms are basically the same. We somehow need to crack the large and medium sized ones, get the tiny magma cubes, and the powder snow block is really perfect for that. Just gonna do a little tick work to get more mob spawning. There we go. So the yeah, large and medium sized ones would freeze to death inside of the powder snow blocks. Because the large one is a bit taller than two blocks, and the medium sized one is just a tiny bit larger than a full block. So, with this one block gap here in between, all of the medium sized ones would still freeze to death, while the small ones are unaffected by it and can be eaten by the frogs. So really, powder snow block, perfect for it. Um, yeah, also because the medium sized one is just a bit larger than a full block. This pattern here also works, so you can you know, cover the whole farm with 25 powder snow blocks. So technically you could also yeah, get away with using just a single powder snow block if you somehow uh, get all of the magma cubes to a certain area. You could, for example, use an iron golem to attract them or use lava to flush them somewhere. But I think, um, just let's keep it simple, just single floor, hop a minecart collection below, that does the trick. Why overcomplicate things with an iron golem also, it's also not too hard to get powder snow. All right, um, so in terms of items power, we're actually getting 2,200 frog lights power and about 200 magma cream. So get the magma cream when the large and medium sized ones are split up. Okay, um, yeah, I'm just gonna give you some markers on the dimensions of the farm. Because we have magma cubes, um, you need to provide a little bit more space compared to, for example, a skeleton farm. So you're gonna have three blocks of space here on top and an 11 by 11 area uh, for them to spawn. And then we have a little bit of a drop because if there are six or more mobs within a certain range of the spawner, it wouldn't work anymore. So that's why we have this one, two, three, four, five block drop uh, until we hit the, the powder snow layer. And this way it's guaranteed that spawner would work 100% of the time. So sometimes it actually happens that mobs would spawn here on top of the spawner this would mostly be a problem for skeleton spawner where they wouldn't wander off, but eventually all of the uh, magma cubes would jump down. So it's perfectly fine. Don't place blocks above here because this would just reduce the spawning rates. All right, so this is really a straightforward farm. I uh, don't think there's really a reason for a block by block tutorial. So I gave you all the dimensions of the spawning area. Then just have rails below to pick up the items. And the only thing is maybe the minecart unloader, but let's quickly go through it. So here we have two um, servers pointing into the dropper here. On top we got a dispenser. This cauldron here is filled with lava. It's important. And here we have a mud block, but you can also use soul sand instead uh, because it's not a full block and therefore um, yeah, the minecart would glitch through and also the items could be picked up through the mud. And yeah, you could use a storage here on the side. This would be the on off switch for the, the minecart if you don't want to have it running while you're away. Okay, apart from that, um, should be easy to recreate, but from experience it's actually quite annoying to build magma cube spawner farm in survival. Done it myself once, all the bastion mobs around and of the magma cube spawning all the time. So this is actually quite annoying that I come prepared. And of course you need to get rocks over, but this should also be quite straightforward. You just breed them, 
Then you got the frog eggs when they hatch, you get the tadpoles, you collect them with the bucket, and then you bring the, those tadpoles to uh, certain biomes. Depending on the temperature, the frogs get different colors. Um, once you have the, the fully grown frogs, you can use minecarts, leads, or boats to bring them over here to the spawner area. Difficulty also plays a role when it comes to the rates of the farm, so we get fewer items on easy compared to hard. Because the harder difficulty, the larger the mega cubes are that spawns. Of course, if you get a large one spawning that splits up with many tiny ones, you will get more items than from just a tiny one spawning. And the local difficulty also plays a role, which is affected by the moon phase again, like the slime spawning, but also how long you played already in the world, you actually reach the cap already after 63 days, and how much time you spend in a chunk, the other maximum is 50 hours. So I'm almost gonna do my test with the maximum local difficulty, um, because it's really hard to compare the rates otherwise. But let's move on and let's also check out the second design. So this is perfect, in case you need something that is a bit quicker than just a spawner farm, but doesn't use portals. Portals are still the best as long as it's still working, but Mojang already announced that in the future mobs probably won't be able to spawn in portals anymore. But yeah, this design is not based on that. It's actually just the swamp slime farm that I copied over to a basalt delta. As you can see here below the bedrock, normal basalt delta biome. And basalt delta only allows gas and magma cubes to spawn. The gas can't spawn inside here because there's not enough room for them. So therefore, we exclusively get magma cream spawning. Of course, the player would AFK here at Y255. And then only mobs can spawn inside of yeah, the farm. Okay, so they're just attracted by iron golems, like in the swamp slime farm, fall in a pit. Freeze to death again here with the powder snow. I filled this up entirely with powder snow to prevent the frogs from jumping out. And also the magma cubes. Also, put a, a lot of rocks in there, it's actually around 30, to clear the tiny cubes as quickly as possible. So on hard difficulty, this farm would produce around 12,000 frog lights power and around 1,200 magma cream power. In case you're interested in building this farm, I still want to optimize this a little bit further to make it a bit quicker, and then make a tutorial on my new tutorial channel within the next two weeks. But let's move on and let's check out a portal farm. Right here we are, I'm gonna show you two portal farms, the simple one here, and then the next world, an optimized version to push the rates. But yeah, the nether part is always the simple yeah, part of the farm, we just need portals. So again, we're in a basalt delta biome, keep a bit of distance to the bedrock here, player would AFK at 255, so everything is still within the despawn sphere. Okay, then the size of this is uh, 30 by 30 of the portals, because if you go larger than that, the portal linking wouldn't work anymore. Uh, we want, of course, everything linked to one portal in your overworld, and you can only be in overworld 128 blocks away from the coordinates that the portal would link to. Uh, it's a bit difficult to explain. For example, here we got spot 00. zero. So this would, of course, link to 00, zero in the overworld. Then the overworld portal at most can be at 128, 128. Um, correspondingly, the other corner we had minus 30, minus 30, so this would link to 240, 240 minus, so at most would be uh, around 120 with the portal, it's also we got in the overworld. Okay, we actually don't need a lot of spawning spaces with this, um, we're already getting about 60,000 items per hour with this type of farm. Okay, yeah, so our AFK spot just in the middle of the farm at 255, let's check out the overworld side. Okay, so in the overworld, the portal here would be at 120, minus 120. So everything still links to that portal. In case you want a player portal, I would just recommend to go out a little bit in the nether. So have it outside and then just walk the 200 blocks um, to this location here. And yeah, watch out of the portal linking. Okay, so this is still the simple farm. So we just have the magma cubes falling down into the frog pit again. And here we can already see the issues and why I had to make a more optimized farm. So we actually have 90 frogs in there to deal with all of the yeah, small or tiny magma cubes. But it's a bit of an issue if you would try to yeah, have even more mobs spawning. More frogs wouldn't actually be um, helpful. Because at this point, um, all of the medium and large sized uh, Magma cubes would block the frogs from pathfinding, so they couldn't reach the tiny ones reliably. So it still works out here with a, a farm of this size. 
But if you make it larger, then this actually becomes quite an issue. Alright, so in case you want to check out this farm, there will be a link in the video description to a world download. But let's move on to the more optimized version. The nether part is basically the same. Instead of just having two layers, we have five layers. But the overall side looks a little bit different now, as we always have a ton of magma cubes arriving here at the portal. And we need to process them somehow. That's why we have a two-stage concept. So on the first layer, again, we freeze the medium and large sized magma cubes. And then all the tiny ones would just rain down into the frog pit again. So that's why we have the chain blocks here. This yeah, prevents the large and medium ones from falling through. But all the tiny ones would fit through there. And on the outside we just have a fence as well. So the tiny ones could fall in the gaps here in between. And then they would fall into four different sections. We have in total 160 frogs. In each section we have 40 frogs. So the reason why we actually split this up was if you just have 160 frogs and there are no dividers in between, it sometimes happens that too much of the frogs would wander to one area and then they couldn't really keep up and like half of the farm would then just be occupied by the you know, tiny magma cubes and it would take too long until basically the frogs could eat through that again so my experience was a bit better to just split it up to make sure yeah we have a bit more equal distribution of the the frogs the downside of this design here is that some of the magma cream items would land here on top of the iron bars or in the chains there so we lose a little bit of those items, but yeah, this farm was mostly ma made to get frog lights. So we're still actually getting 12,000 magma cream per hour and around 140,000 frog lights with this farm. And this is pretty much pushing what my computer can handle. So in case you have a weaker PC, I would definitely not recommend to build this farm because this is really pushing it. We have 600 entities usually at all times, um, yeah, especially while I'm recording, it's even worse. So when not recording, it's definitely better for me. Usually runs at around 30 to 40 MSPT. Again, we're using the same Minecraft unloader again. And I have to say, this is one of the most satisfying things in the game right now. All the Minecraft are coming in and all the items just plop out immediately. And then the Minecraft is launched again. Yeah, this is quite fun to watch. All right, then there's one more thing to talk about. Why am I using honey blocks here? So of course, they would prevent the jobs from jumping over the dividers. But there's actually a second reason why we're doing this. And that reason is lag optimization. The frogs are incredibly laggy. So here we have 100 frogs and it takes 11.4 milliseconds to process all of them. It's incredibly laggy. It's more than twice as laggy as a village in comparison. And while a village is already known as one of the laggiest entities in the game, you should avoid. But there's a way to reduce the frog lag. For some reason it gets significantly better if you just put blocks above the frogs. So now down to 4.6 milliseconds. I think it probably has to do with the jumping calculations. Maybe they're so complex that um, yeah, just you can reduce it by just putting blocks above. Instead of just gla using glass blocks, you could also use powder snow. This is actually quite convenient for the farm. Um, then let's do a quick test. They basically get the same results. This still try to jump, but lag is yeah, even better now with the powder snow. There's one way to do it, and the other alternative is just to have them on honey. Let's also check that out. And with honey, we are now down to 2.8 milliseconds, and almost an 80% lag reduction. In case you're wondering, combining powder snow and honey doesn't yield any additional benefit though. And that's why it's a really good idea to put the frogs on honey blocks in your frog light farm. But it's probably also good to know in case you want to keep a lot of pet frogs at your base. Maybe you should rethink that because they can definitely lag your world. I will also provide a world download for this type of farm. But that's it for today. Thanks guys for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.